Hi there, it's Florence here. I'm once again living dangerously with my hair down. Um, if it touches the microphone, I'm sorry. My YouTube channel recently has been a lot of me posting missing video podcasts where I show what I've been working on um, and what new yarn I've got or whatever, and I post one of those every maybe two to four weeks with the occasional tutorial scattered in there too. But I do really enjoy making the occasional special episode where I talk about something slightly different, and that is what today's episode is going to be. I really like watching these videos where people show what yarn they have in stash, particularly if it's somebody who I know has quite similar taste in yarn and products to me, because it's interesting to hear their take on the yarn, being able to hold it in their hands. Maybe they have colors that I find out I'm really interested in. And so today I'm just going to be showing the yarn that I have in my flat. Maybe it's not everything, I'm not the most organized, but I think this is kind of everything that I could find when I was sitting down to film this. Also, this is only going to be showing full sweater quantities, top quantities, sock quantities of yarn. I'm not going to be showing any of the leftovers I have from previous projects. Those are in another box that I have over there. I do have some ideas about what I'm going to do with that, but yeah, that's not what this video is about. Before I jump in and show you guys what yarn I keep in my flat, um, I will quickly mention what I'm wearing. I've had a bunch of questions about this one lately. This is called the Fennel Seed Jacket, and it's a pattern that I had tested quite a few months ago. And I have been really procrastinating on getting the pattern done um, after the test and it finished, because it's one of those patterns that needed a little bit of extra work between the test and it finishing and publication. As of this video going up today, this pattern should be available. Um, I will link it in the description. I will try and link, well, I'm realizing now what a large task linking all of this yarn might be, um, but I'll try to at least list what most of the yarn is or put it on the screen somewhere so that it's easy for you to find if you're interested in any of it. And since we are talking about yarn, I will mention this uh, cardigan jacket is knitted in heavy merino and soft silk mohair, both from Knitting for Olive. I don't know if I even have any heavy merino in stash. There's certainly a lot of Knitting for Olive mohair, um, but it is one of my favorite yarns. The color is fennel seed. It is one of my favorites. I definitely do recommend it. Okay, that's that out of the way, and I guess now we will move on to look at what's in the first box. I don't know if you can see very clearly, I have these two big white IKEA boxes that I keep under my bed, and then I have a couple of extra sweater quantities here in smaller cardboard boxes too. But I guess I will start with this one since it's right here um, and easy for me to reach without unclipping my microphone. And this is the first sweater quantity of yarn that's sitting at the top. This yarn is Double Sunday from Sandless Gun. This is a yarn that I've used before, so I can speak a little bit about it. It is a DK weight, I think non-superwash merino wool. And this is in one of the Petite Knit collaboration colorways. It comes in a bunch of colors. It's very, very pretty, quite smooth and very soft. If you're a little bit sensitive to wool, this might be something that could still totally work for you. And it's one of my go-to yarns for when I'm knitting gifts for people who aren't as used to very woolly wool. It feels super luxurious. It is very nice. I also do feel like the price of this yarn is quite reasonable. I think it's about six pounds or so per ball, which really isn't the end of the world. Although the yardage is not a lot, 108 meters per 50 grams. This color here is, I think it's called cardamom, but it's color 3821. And as I said, it's one of the Petite Knit collaboration colors. This yarn is used in a bunch of really popular patterns. I think there are a lot of Petite Knit patterns that use it off the top of my head. Uh, the Marseille sweater definitely uses this. But since it is just a DK weight merino, um, you can use this for anything, which is why I think I bought it without too much of a plan. And I do just keep it here in stash. I think I have enough to knit any jumper that I want. So this is one of the things that I have the fewest plans for. This might end up being something original. I might follow a pattern with this. I really don't know. But since it is just DK weight, I know that I can use it for a lot of different things. And so I'm not really stressed about it. Yeah, this is like guilt-free yarn for me to uh, own in my stash. I bought it when it was on sale and I'm quite happy to have it sitting here waiting for something to inspire me to use it. Okay. Sweater quantity number two. This is a slightly more annoying one because I, from memory, think this is quite a small sweater quantity. I believe I have 800 meters of this. So cutting it a little bit fine. You have probably seen this before. This is the Izzia Aran Tweed. Color is just called gray and it's 160 meters per 100 grams. So I have, I think, five of these. 
This yarn also comes in a sort of fingering weight version, which gives a very similar look, and that is very popular. But this Aran weight one has always been particularly beautiful to me. I don't know if you can see in the light gray, it has flecks of like dark gray, paler gray, and also a really golden beige color. I don't know if my camera wants to focus on this yarn at all, but it is really beautiful. I feel like on camera, it just shows up as gray, but it's a very lovely gray. And then I will show this at the same time because I bought them together to hold together for a project. This is the Izzia Alpaca One. This is in the color E2S, which is a light gray. I think they will work really well together. I really like this yarn. I've been using it a lot recently. I feel like it's not that mohair is going out of fashion, but I definitely feel like a smaller proportion of the patterns being released nowadays use mohair. I feel like the trend is not uh, going quite as strongly as it was a few years ago. And if you don't want to use mohair, this is a really great option. It is lace weight, 100% alpaca, so it can just help slightly bulk out whatever yarn you're using, but it is very affordable. You get 400 meters per 50 grams. I want to say these cost about seven pounds, so they're sort of cheaper than a ball of mohair, even before you get to the fact they have almost double the yardage as well. I am sometimes sensitive to alpaca, but I've never had a problem holding this with something else. And I do have, I think, a few pieces that are made with this yarn held with something else. In terms of a plan for this, I actually bought this when I first came to Oxford. So I think I came to Oxford for a job interview, for a job that I ended up getting and is now my current job. And after the job interview, before my train, I had time to sort of speed walk to the Oxford yarn store. And I was feeling really happy with how my job interview had gone. And so I treated myself to this yarn. It was quite exciting at the time because there isn't Izzia in any yarn shop near where I used to be living in Cambridge. And so it was very exciting to be able to see and touch everything. But now that I live in Oxford and this yarn shop is a walk away from my flat, um, it's much easier to access this stuff. And so it's a bit less exciting. So I had some ideas for an original design. I don't know if I will end up um, actually turning that into anything, but I am currently working on a pattern for the step-by-step -step cardigan. You might have seen it. I have one sit in Noru Madara. It's currently in testing and I need to sit down and edit the tutorial video that will be going along with it. I think that in terms of quantity and thickness, this yarn might work really well for that. And I think that because this tweed is so pretty, I think a very plain stockinette garment would really do it justice. So maybe a step-by-step -step cardigan would be a good move for using this yarn. I can knit one of those up in like a week <laughs> if I'm not working or well under a week even. The step-by-step -step sweater, both of them I knitted in four days. So at some point, I guess I will uh, sit down and spend some time working on making something with this yarn because it would just be such a good wardrobe staple that I know I will wear all the time. Okay. I feel like we're eventually going to get to stuff that's been sort of languishing in my stash for a really long time. And this is a pretty good example. I've had this for a year or two, probably. It's a little bit of an example of a yarn not looking quite how I expected it to when I bought it online. This is Noro Silk Garden Sock Solo. I think this is another one where I have to get up close to show you what it looks like because showing it from a distance doesn't do it justice. It has a lot of other colors in it, neon green, baby pink, brown, all through this blue. This is a very popular yarn, and if you have seen people using it, then you've probably seen the color number one. I think it's called SO1 or Omitama, and it's sort of a grayish color with a lot of rainbow flecks in it. I have used that color before to knit a jumper, and I wanted to use it again, but that color was really hard to find in stock. These Nori yarns tend to go out of stock for like months or years at a time, um, and they become impossible to find. But I did see that they'd released this color. I think it was new. This color is T89. Um, and I really like blue, as I'm sure you've noticed. So I did pick up a sweater quantity of it. Now, this is quite a bright color for me. I don't tend to wear very vibrant blues. I don't tend to wear these sorts of teal blue colors either. And so um, it's definitely something that I find a little bit intimidating. I saw somebody knit a petite knit terrazzo sweater in this yarn, um, held with this exact mohair, on Ravelry. And that was, I think, part of what prompted me to pick it up. The mohair that I got to hold with it is Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair in the color Dusty Delft Blue. This is really, really pretty. You can see this is a much uh, more purpley blue as opposed to a greeny blue. I find this one a lot more wearable and so I'm kind of hoping that it will soften the Noro if I hold them together. Yeah, so I saw this one person 
I had knitted a Trazzo sweater in particular with this yarn and it looked really great. This is, I guess, now one of the prime candidates for something that I might end up giving away or selling. I just don't feel super inspired by it, and recently I was able to pick up a sweater quantity of this Silk Garden Sock Solo in colour number one, the more neutral colour, and so I feel like I'm more excited to knit that up than this blue one. I don't have that right now, it's at my parents' house, um, but yeah, maybe this will be something that I give away, I'm not sure. I think I actually bought like a proper sweater quantity of this as well, like I don't think I've got 800 metres or something, I think I have 1200, which is enough to knit basically any jumper in my size. So I'm glad it at least <laughs> would have value to someone else as well. Um, I'm sure I can pass it on to somebody who is more likely to use it if I don't start feeling excited about it soon. Okay, on to the next one. This one I'm not going to talk so much about because I purchased this quite recently and so I spoke about it maybe one or two episodes ago on my knitting podcast. This is part of a camisole quantity of Knitting for Olive Merino. This is my probably my all-time favourite yarn, you can use it for anything. It's a really beautiful, non-scratchy merino wool um, that just looks so nice when knitted up into a summer top. And at least for the climate that I live in here in the UK, I find that it's like plenty cool enough for me to wear in the summer. So this is really my go-to yarn for summer knitting. I've said before about how I have a few camisole quantities of fingering weight merino in my stash without specific plans that I don't feel at all guilty about them because when the summer comes around and the designers who I really like start releasing a lot of camisole patterns, I know that I can pretty much knit up any of those patterns with any of this yarn. And so it's nice to have it available here, ready to go in a few colors that I really like. This one is slightly different because it's um, selected to knit something striped. So I have a dark and light color. I think I bought two balls of each. I can probably get a camisole out of two balls of this yarn, um, but three feels safer. And so for stripes, I have four. So I guess this is enough for a full t-shirt, um, possibly. Something I was thinking about doing, if nothing else really jumps out to me, is knitting another of my pattern, the Tombow tee, which I wore so much last summer. It's a striped t-shirt. Maybe I can put a picture here. The colors are navy blue for this one and marzipan for this one. This is a really grayish white, and this is a quite saturated, very, very dark blue. They look really beautiful together. I did get some comments about how there was possibly a risk of the color bleeding, which I guess is very true. I will swatch and see. And if it does end up being a problem, then I think I can knit both of these colors separately and create two camisoles that I really like, so it should be all good. I also have a camisole quantity of this one. If I was a yarn, I think I would be this yarn. It is like totally my color. This is San Niscan Sunday. Again, it's a petite knit collaboration colorway. This one is 6050. I always forget the name. It's called something like Into the Clouds or something like that. It's a dusty blue color. <laughs> it's really pretty. I know that I wear this sort of color as a camisole a lot because I have a camisole I knitted a couple of years ago in a similar color that I've worn a bunch. And so this is something I'm really looking forward to working with. I actually haven't knitted a camisole in the San Niscan Sunday, but it's a very similar yarn to the Knitting for Olive Merino in terms of thickness and texture. So I think it will work really well. That's something I'm looking forward to trying this year. And I think I have maybe three of these. Okay, so we've almost gone through that first box. There is one thing left. I hope this isn't scrunching too much. I'm trying to stay very still. Um, I never removed this yarn from its bag. And this is, I'm pretty sure, the oldest yarn in my stash. Younger beginner Nissa Florence has good taste, um, but you will be seeing some quite vintage Philcolana packaging here. This is a full bag of 10 balls of Philcolana Tilia. It's just a standard silk mohair like any other. This one is in the color green tea, which I think is 355. I've put it down so it isn't making any more noise now. I bought this yarn so long ago that I think I paid just over five pounds per ball. Good luck finding Philcolana Tilia for five pounds a ball nowadays. I think I originally wanted to make a petite knit fortune sweater, if you know what that looks like. Maybe I'll put a picture. I still think that's super cute and would be a great option, but it's another of those things where like, if you have 10 balls of silk mohair, there's a lot of different stuff that you could make. I mean, that's more than a thousand meters held double. And so I can knit any of those like petite knit cumulus blouse type patterns or something similar. And 
I do nowadays have like a pattern idea that floats around in my brain. I have mohair in my nose and it's really uncomfortable. I really want to do like a long sleeve blouse with some ties on it and stuff. And that image has been in my head for a long time. And so I think I will use that yarn to try and knit that up hopefully this summer, maybe for like an autumn release. I'm trying to be a bit more realistic about how much I can actually get done this summer. So we'll see. It's a lovely color. It's the kind of warm green, a little bit like uh, this cardigan that I particularly like wearing. And yeah, it does feel like a bargain now that it costs a lot more. Okay, I paused the video and reshuffled and I now have the other box here within reach. So let's move on to this one. This one is a little bit less joy sparking. Like that first box is very much a nice sweater quantity of this yarn I like, a nice sweater quantity of this yarn I like. This one has a lot more sort of odds and ends in it. So let's see what we have. I guess I'll start with this one. This one again, I've showed pretty recently on the podcast. This is a sweater quantity of Wool Local. Um, this is the fingering weight version. I have previously used the iron weight version as well. It's by Erica Knight. And I think the idea of this yarn is that it is produced from fleece to yarn in less than 50 miles. So it's sourced at, at the British Wool Auction at Bradford, um, and then scoured, combed, spun, dyed, steamed, and handed in Yorkshire. I'm not from Yorkshire, but this is still pretty local to me, I guess, at least it's British Wool. The game plan, I think, is to hold this double to make a sort of DK-ish thickness. The colours that I have here are 806 Kathy Dark Grey and 804 Gritstone Flax. Both of them are greyish brown, so I think they look really beautiful together. I bought this from um, another local yarn shop in Oxford, the Woolhound in the Covered Market. I wasn't really like looking for it, but when I saw it there, I just kept thinking about it and I ended up buying this when this colour came back into stock. I want to do stripes with this. I might end up designing something, but if not, I think like a good safe option that I know I like is one of the variations on the Leon sweater by Petite Knit. It's just a DK weight fine striped jumper that I think is really pretty and this yarn would work really well for, I think. I don't know, maybe I'll have to play around with gauge a bit, but it shouldn't be too far off. This maybe shouldn't even be in here because this is a work in progress, not even just um, yarn. But the yarn for this project is inside this box as well. Um, and it's not even an abandoned project. It's one I keep saying I'm going to go back to and then, and then I don't go back to, uh, but I really should. Okay, so this is, I don't know if you can see, half of a puff sleeve blouse. And this is actually so cute. Like I knitted this a long time ago and I still think it's beautiful. It's definitely something I could see myself wearing a lot. And I guess this summer I should probably just hurry up and finish it off. I think uh, I need to go down a needle size to do this eye cord edge around the neck. And so I have to take it off and redo it. And that's the sort of thing that my ADHD brain just hates doing, like going back and modifying something I've already done. It's the worst, I hate it. But yes, you can see it's got puff sleeves. These are still on hold, like they will be longer. And it has a keyhole at the front. Here, a keyhole with like um, some slightly scrunched up eye cord ties. To try and put it away in a state where it's like easy to go back to. Aside from the fact it's really cute, the other reason I'm like, I definitely need to go back and carry on with this is because the yarn is really special. This is Cardiff Cashmere Brush Light. Color is 119, I think it's called Mose or Mose. I've used it to make a pair of gloves in the regular cashmere before as well. It is 82% cashmere and 18% silk. So it kind of has a similar construction to silk mohair where it has a silk core and then cashmere through it instead of mohair. But this is uh, not as fluffy. It does have a really beautiful ethereal look to it. I don't know if you can see. And that color is so pretty. Yeah, there's nothing not to like about this. I just really don't want to pull out that eye cord, but I guess I should go back and do it. Get this blouse done. I think it will be a project that I really love, so it's definitely worth doing. I will have it done by the end of the summer. Okay, on to the next one that's just been languishing in stash for so long. If I'm tapping my face, it's because mohair is sticking to my foundation and then my whole face is itchy. Filming this video feels like an endurance sport. Okay, um, what do I have here? Oh, uh, I have here an ad. This yarn was gifted. I don't think any of the yarn I've showed prior to this point was gifted. Um, I will definitely go back and annotate or change the video if, I, if it was. 
uh, but I feel like I should mention this yarn was gifted. This I got at the shop opening for my ivory room, which is a yarn shop that I speak about all the time. Back when the shop opened, I went to the opening event, which was an amazing experience. There was really nice free food, a lot of beautiful yarn to look at and buy, and we got given these amazing goodie bags full of yarn treats as well, and it was all free entry, so I'm so glad I went to that. Anyway, um, Valentina wanted me to design a pattern for the shop, and at the time we picked up this yarn, the idea was I was going to do a cable jumper, and then later on I think she decided she didn't want to stock this yarn anymore, so this idea got, like, cancelled. But I still have this yarn, and I still want to design the cable jumper, just it would be like a pattern for my personal store rather than a pattern for her store. I will get this pattern done for this winter. I'm promising this to myself because I've been wanting to knit it for ages um, and I still think it would be totally beautiful. The yarn that I have here is BC Garn Samilapura. I haven't used this before but it is totally beautiful. You are not going to be able to see this on camera at all but it, it is cream wool and it has little greyish or like black flex in it. Not like enough to call it a tweed, it's just one of those yarns that is almost a very pale grey and the grey colour comes from there being different coloured fibres in the yarn rather than like it being dyed flat grey. I don't know the technical terms for any of this um, but it is very beautiful and I think I've mentioned before I get quite intimidated knitting or wearing cream and these sorts of slightly interesting creams are less scary for me to wear. To go with that I have this, this is Marjo Garn Pearl Mohair, it's a regular silk mohair, um, this one is in the colour Ivory. I've used this yarn in this colour actually um, to knit a cardigan before, I really like it. I don't like it as much as some of the other silk mohairs I've tried, like the Knitting for Olive or Izzia, but this is actually I think quite a bit cheaper so I do recommend this as a sort of middle ground for affordability versus quality. Something that's a little bit nicer than drops, but not as nice or as expensive as a lot of the other options. Yeah, it's a good mohair and I do like it a lot. Yeah, this is going to be an asymmetric cable jumper. You might have seen sketches of it um, on my Instagram. I need to get on and knit it because I'm really excited about it. I truly think this could be my favourite jumper in my wardrobe if I just get on and do it. The problem is like starting a design is a lot of effort, particularly if it's cables because I have to do a lot of thinking and a lot of charts before I can sit down and start knitting. And when I cast on a new project I really just want to get going, so um, it's a tricky thing to motivate myself to do, especially now that summer is coming and I should probably be focusing on summer patterns. But yes, I really do want to get going with this. What else do we have in here? Oh yes, this is a nice one. When I found this yarn, I really thought like I had found this amazing secret that was going to change my life. Cashmere yarn is really expensive and I think a pretty standard price for cashmere yarn is about 15 or 16 pounds for 108 meters for the sort of sport weighty uh, or like DK weight Cardiff cashmere classic, uh, Lang cashmere premium. You're going to see all these yarns later in the video. I really like cashmere. This on the other hand is, I want to say, £14 for 200 metres. Something like that. So it is quite a good deal. This is a little thinner, it's uh, somewhere between like the Cardiff Cashmere DK weight and the Cardiff Cashmere fingering weight. It's like a more substantial fingering weight, I guess. But yeah, it's a great price. It's 97% recycled cashmere and 3% recycled wool. And this is not from a yarn company, weirdly enough. This yarn comes from Skull Studio, I don't know if you can see. I don't want to like say any lies about this brand, so my understanding of it is that it's a Danish clothing mostly brand. They do homeware as well. They are like a real guilty pleasure clothing brand for me. It's a little bit expensive but I have like blouses, t-shirts, almost all of my tote bags um, that I use are also from Skull Studio. And they sell a lot of very nice Danish wool knitwear. Um, and then something that they do which I think is really cool is they also sell knitting patterns for a lot of their knitwear. So I was looking at these knitting patterns and I found out they also sell cashmere yarn in two colours, brown or grey. They're the only two available. You'll notice uh, later on in this video that I own a lot of grey cashmere, so brown was the obvious one to go for. I have bought this before, I knitted a scarf in it. And then I liked it enough that I went back and bought this, I think I have four balls, so 800 meters. 
And my game plan for this, which has been my game plan since I bought it, is definitely this time to knit another Tombow tee. Uh, striped t-shirt pattern that I released last year. But I'm just going to knit it in one colour, just to have a brown cashmere t-shirt that I can throw on during the summer. Maybe cashmere isn't so much of a summer fibre, but like, yeah. A lot of the summer the UK isn't unpleasantly warm, so I think it's totally fine. And I just think it could be a real wardrobe staple, also something that you could throw on underneath a jumper in the winter to keep it a little bit warmer, even. A really versatile piece, and I look forward to knitting with this yarn. It's just really nice, it's really soft, it's a joy to knit with. I wish Skull Studio sold more yarn, um, but they don't. Before I sat down to film this video, I did try to like pull out all of the leftover yarn from other projects and move it into my leftover yarn box. Um, but I missed this one and I'm feeling really happy that I found it. So I'll just mention, this is Sandness Garn Pagan. This is what I used to knit the Moby sweater like a long time ago. That jumper has sleeves that are too short and a body that is too short. And I've just found like a ball and a half of this. So I'm feeling very excited that I can now go back and add a little extra length to that jumper with this. I don't have any pig and stash. No, that's a lie, I do. I will be able to talk about it later. I was about to say, I like this yarn so much that if I don't have an opportunity to speak about it, like with reference to a full sweater quantity, I would mention it now, but I will. Anyway, we're getting to the bottom of this box and it's a lot of odds and ends and sock yarn. This has no label on it. This is onion sock, I think. It's a sock yarn which uses nettles, I think, instead of nylon. I have no trust in any sock yarn that doesn't have nylon in it. My past experiences with nylon free sock yarns have been rough, like I've worn through the socks in maybe three or four wears. But I really like darning things and I also really like reviewing sock yarn and I don't want to just give a positive or very bland review for every sock yarn. Like I don't want all of my sock yarn reviews to be like, I tried this sock yarn, it's 75% wool, 25% nylon, it feels like sock yarn and it wears fine. And so I do want to experiment a bit with sock yarns which are made of other things and uh, this is one of them. I was just super curious about it, I can't tell you what colour it is, I don't know what the label is. But to cast this on I do have to be at peace with the fact that whatever sock I spend weeks knitting will probably break and I just haven't got to that point yet. So yeah, at some point I will... Um, knit something with it. I realise that sounds very critical of onion sock yarn. Maybe it won't break, I don't know yet. I just don't have a lot of confidence in anything about nylon in. And then this has nylon in, so this is uh, something I'm actually very excited to knit with. This is Gepard Cash Sock. I wanted this for the longest time and it wasn't available in the UK and then suddenly um, I think Beautiful Knitters started selling it and so I picked it up. It is 70% merino wool, 20% polyamide, and 10% cashmere. So the bad news, I guess, is that it's one of those yarns which sells itself as being a cashmere, like cash sock, even though it only has 10% cashmere in it. The good news is that it has a like good amount of polyamide, and so it is probably actually strong enough for socks. I always wonder if like the strength of the wool makes a difference, and I think the wool that's used in sock yarns like this with 10% cashmere tends to be very soft as well. So we'll see how it um, holds up. But I think this is super pretty. The colour is 102. It's the kind of colour that I just wear a lot of socks in. And it does feel really soft and really good. I think this colour would look really great for a sock with lace or cables. Again, I don't have a specific plan, but that's fine. I knit a lot of socks with lace and cables. And so this will have an opportunity to shine, I'm sure. Is there anything else in here? I don't think so. I think we went through everything. Cool, that's the second big box done. On to odds and ends in small boxes and bags. Okay, these two. I have to be careful not to dox myself because this one has my address on it. Love that for me. These two are the same but different. Um, both of these are a sweater quantity of light grey DK weight cashmere. Also add yarn sponsored. This was gifted by my ivory room. Again, the yarn always comes beautifully packaged so I haven't thrown this box away. And here it is. This is, I think, eight hanks of Gepard Eco Cashmere. This yarn feels so good. I'm going to show you in a second the Cardiff Cashmere Classic, which I also have a sweater quantity of. This just feels so much more substantial. It's less fluffy, um, but it's still really soft. 
It's made of a mix of new cashmere fibers and recycled, unused 100% cashmere products from the Italian textile industry. And this color is a 506. This is pricey yarn. I have wanted this for a really long time um, and I've never felt like comfortable spending that amount of money on a sweater quantity of yarn. And then Valentina just gifted it to me out of nowhere around Christmas, which I was so grateful for. Like the parcel just arrived at my house and I was like, oh my goodness, this is probably the most exciting sweater quantity of yarn I've ever had. I did read the instructions for this yarn, which say you're supposed to steam it before you start using it. Um, and that seems like a lot of effort and has kind of put me off jumping in to knit this yarn up. I did ask about it in a podcast and I got a lot of comments saying that other podcasters have steamed this yarn and said it made a really big difference. So I probably should. What I was thinking is like, does it really make a difference if I knit the jumper first and then steam the finished jumper? I almost feel like if I do that, it's easier to make sure that you're steaming every part of the jumper and like getting all the yarn. I don't know, maybe that will be the move. Maybe that will be what I end up doing. It is already fabulously soft, even unsteamed. Yeah, I love this stuff. Um, obviously I haven't knitted with it before, so it will be my first time, but I'm so excited to. And it comes in a lot of beautiful colors. So I think this might be a yarn that I reach for more in the future. I'm very lucky that my hobby pretty much pays for itself now. Um, well, I mean, it totally pays for itself thanks to like this YouTube channel, whatever. So I can afford to buy yarn like this if I want to. And uh, if I end up enjoying this as much as I think I might, I might end up picking up some more to make some winter accessories next year. I think a matching hat and scarf in that yarn would be amazing. Oh, in terms of plans for this, I don't really have any. I made a zipper sweater as a gift before. And Valentina said when she gifted this to me that she thought I could make another zipper sweater for myself this time with this uh, sweater quantity. I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, I might, that is a possibility, but I feel like the zip is kind of a like weighty and awkward thing to put into such a soft cashmere yarn. I almost want this to be like a pure stockinette, plain jumper that I just totally treasure. The danger of that is it might end up being too similar to what I plan to make with this. This might be the next thing I cast on actually. Um, I might cast this on today. I'm torn between a couple of options. I want to cast on a new design today. I've showed this on my podcast before. I bought this for myself uh, when I was job hunting after uni. I said that like I wouldn't use it until I had a job and then I'd knit myself a jumper for the office. Well, I shortly afterwards got a job, um, but I work at a sort of jeans and t-shirt office. So there's no need for me to have an office appropriate jumper. With that being said, I would still definitely wear an office appropriate jumper to the office. So my game plan for this, what I want to do with this is, I'm going to design a Tombow sweater. Basically, I really like the Tombow tee, which I've mentioned too many times this episode. I think it is probably my favorite design that I've ever done. I really was super happy with it. And I would really like to have a jumper which uses the same construction and has a similar fit. And the gauge will be quite different. This is a DK, although as I said, it is a quite a light DK, I guess. This is Cardiff Cashmere Classic. The color is called, I think, Piombo. The color is 518. It is a stunning pale gray. And compared to that other cashmere I showed a second ago, the Gepard Eco Cashmere Vintage or whatever it's called, this is very fluffy and very light. It feels like it would knit up into something that's much more delicate. I think if you just want to buy yourself cashmere one time to knit one thing in cashmere and it's a real treat, I don't think you'd be disappointed buying this yarn. Um, it really does feel special. It's not very durable. I think that's part of the reason I've been hesitant to knit a whole garment in it. I have knitted quite a few things in this yarn, scarves, gloves. I've never done a full jumper before. And the gloves in particular, I find really fluff up a lot. Um, they look like a cloud. It's totally magical. It's a much finer halo than um, mohair, I guess, would give. It's really, yeah, magical. This yarn also comes in a fingering weight version called Cardiff Cashmere Small, and I think a Aran or chunky weight version as well. I really recommend it. And it's just to me like what cashmere should be. It's a really good baseline, special feeling DK weight cashmere that you can use for anything. And yeah, I bought this box set from Knitted Home, I think. 
not sponsored. I paid for that myself. It cost me a horrifying amount of money, but it is, I think, quite a good deal compared to buying balls of this yarn separately. Okay, what next? I think sort of the last thing I have is this tote, and I'm not going to go over this in so much detail because I just haven't taken anything out of this tote, but I showed all of the yarn here in my, I think, last podcast episode. So we'll just do like a speed round on what I have in here. I have two balls of Lang Cashmere Premium. This yarn feels indistinguishable from Cardiff Cashmere Classic. It looks indistinguishable from Cardiff Cashmere Classic. Conspiracy theory, they're probably the same yarn, I don't know. Uh, it's 100% cashmere. Color is 78.0233. 233 maybe? 25 grams is 115 meters. I have two of them. This will probably be a tiny scarf. I really like the look of a denim jumpsuit with a tiny scarf. I have a pale blue denim jumpsuit and I wear my dark green tiny scarf with that pretty much every time I wear it. I now also have like a black denim jumpsuit and the dark green doesn't go so well with the black so I thought maybe blue would be cute. I think this would also pair really well with cream, anything. Um, just a good color for a tiny scarf. I'm thinking maybe I'll knit another brioche bandana, I think it's called, by Garnel Select. That's my favorite tiny scarf I've knitted before. I test knitted the pattern, I think, a long time ago, and I will definitely knit another. I really like it. I have this yarn. This um, is the other contender for what I might cast on today. First summer top of the year, perhaps. This is knitting for Olive Merino again, which I've spoken about before. The color is Dusty Aqua. It's really pretty, and this is going to be a t-shirt. I want to do a ribbed t-shirt with like an interesting uneven rib on it. Um, I think it will look really cute, and I just need to do some maths to get started. <laughs> Once that part's out of the way, I'm sure I'll really enjoy the process. Yeah, it's a very pretty color. And then I think this is the last thing. As I said, I will get to talk about Pigint, another of my absolute favorite yarns in this video. This is Pigint Petite Knit Collaboration colorway. I think this is exactly the same colorway as the Sunday. This is the Sunday that I showed earlier. Um, yeah, they're all color 6050. This I totally have a very specific plan for. I, I bought it recently because I'm going to knit a jumper for my dad with it. I know it's a me color. I think I get my taste in color from him. I think he'd wear it too. Um, this is going to be a petite knit storm sweater, I think. I mentioned before I actually don't have enough yarn. They didn't have enough in the shop, but I bought it anyway. And so the cuffs or whatever might end up being a different dye lot. If any of you guys have a couple of spare balls of 6050 in dye lot 118438. Let me know and I will buy it off you. Yeah, this is a 100% I think Norwegian wool. This wears so well. It's not super soft, but I don't find it to be uncomfortably scratchy. I can wear it against my neck with no problem. I have a pretty good number of jumpers knitted in this yarn and it's one that I just keep going back to. It's really cheap. I think it's about four pounds per ball. It comes in a lot of beautiful colors. It's that sort of very standard DK weight that you can knit up into pretty much any pattern. Um, it's just a joy to use. You can splice the ends. Um, it feels really substantial. Excellent yarn. I really, really like it. I think these two, the Knitting for Olive Merino and the Pig Int, these are like the staple yarns in my collection. This one for winter, this one for summer. I really can't recommend them enough. And I'm sure if you watch knitting podcasters, you've heard all of this a million times before. But yeah, I just, I love them so much. I am realizing now that I definitely have at least one more sweater quantity <laughs> that I don't know where it is, but should have been in this video. Should I have a look for it? Maybe a quick look. I'll be back. This video is going to be so fun to edit. I'm all over the place remembering I have more yarn in different places. It's another tote that I never unpacked. This one is from the Oxford Yarn Store. I have two sweater quantities in here. Okay, so this is Izia Tweed. I can't tell you the color, it doesn't have a label on. And uh, Izia Alpaca One, again, no label. Oh, the Alpaca One is E4S. The Tweed, I still don't know. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these. I think it will be another Mabel wrap, which is a pattern that I'm going to be releasing very soon. I do have somewhere, more yarn that I don't know where it is, oh dear. Somewhere I have some gifted mohair from Mohair by Canard, which I will also hold with it. So all three strands will be held together and it will probably be a dark brown Mabel wrap. Yeah, I think, you know, this 
Isia tweed. I don't have much to say about it because I already spoke about the Aaron tweed earlier in this video. And then Isia Alpaca One, again, I spoke about when I spoke about the Aaron tweed. This is just like a light fingering weight version, I guess. Really nice yarn, um, something I'm definitely looking forward to using. And then the last sweater quantity is going to be the hardest to show. I feel like for everything in this video, I've just grabbed one or two balls to show you, but this final sweater quantity is a pain because every ball is different. I think I showed these in a previous podcast episode as well, actually, um, but this is my Izia variety <laughs> sweater quantity. I just really wanted to do a sweater quantity where I just hold together a bunch of different yarn in different colors. And so I went to Oxford Yarn Store, which stocks a lot of different stuff from Izia, and I just picked out loads of different fingering and lace weight yarn to try. There's a couple of these Izia Tfinney, Alpaca One, as I mentioned before. This is Izia Highland Wool, again, like a, let's say a very light fingering weight wool. Izia Silk Mohair, this stuff is amazing. I'm amazed I didn't have any in stash. I guess I normally end up using it for sort of sponsored test knits. I don't tend to buy it for myself, but it's the softest mohair I've used for sure. What's this? More alpaca one. Oh, this is spinny. It's like a single ply. There's probably more, but you can see it's like a gray and dark green selection of all different yarn from Izia. That's another one I'm actually super excited to cast on. I think it will be really beautiful and a lot of fun to just sort of let go and uh, use the colors to create a really natural looking gradient. Okay, so I think that's it. Obviously I'm not sure that's it, uh, since I at least don't know where the mohair by Canard is and I definitely have that somewhere. But yes, that is everything that I could find for this video. There is a lot of yarn here. I think I could probably knit for a year, maybe about a year. That's probably quite a good estimate with the yarn that I have. Um, but I think as long as I keep using it up at about the same rate that I'm buying it and being gifted it, I think I'd be happy with that. I find it really inspiring to have this yarn around, um, to have projects ready to go that I'm really excited to cast on. I feel like it helps motivate me to finish the projects that I'm working on so I can start something new. And uh, my yarn just brings me a lot of joy. I love wool. I don't know what to say. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this interesting, a look at what I have in my flat. I will be back in soon with a proper knitting podcast episode for those of you who enjoy those more. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.